On the new 2024 modernized CDL, you do get to take this checklist on. Um, I'll have this on screen. This one is the one I actually use, so it's marked up and folded up. But this tells you everything you have to do, um, everything you have to check. So I wouldn't bank on having this on the test in case your instructor wouldn't want you to, but you are supposed to be able to have it. And it's great for practice to make sure that you don't miss anything and that you go in the same order every time. So we'll have this on screen and they should provide it to you unmarked um, when you get there if you ask for it. It must be unmarked. It must be unmarked. That's the truck and trailer for the CDL Class A inspection. Uh, the first thing you do is you come to the front of the vehicle, stand about 15 feet away, and you look at everything here. So I like to start from the top down. You can do whatever is best for you. Now, from the in-cab, we know that all the lights are working because we already had the um, inspector or the tester um, look at them while we tested them on the inside. So we're going to say that all the lights are working because he checked them and we know they are working. So at the top, the air horns look properly mounted and secured as well as the antenna. Our clearance lights are properly mounted and secured, working and of the proper color and there is no haziness to them. They are clear. Looking at the windshield, the windshield is properly mounted and secured. There's no cracks or breaks or any visible damage. There are no illegal stickers or any stickers or anything that is making it hard to see out of the windshield. Again, our windshield wipers are properly mounted and secured. They're not broken and they're where they ought to be. There's no cracks or breaks in them. Our traffic monitoring devices, not our mirrors, our traffic monitoring devices, the four of them in the front, are properly mounted secured which I will check physically check when I go up there the hood and everything on the hood is properly mounted secured the lights again the headlights are properly mounted and secured of the proper color they're clear they're not hazy and they're working we have our license plate in the front is properly mounted and secured and not broken our driving lights are properly mounted, secured, working, and of the proper color, and they're not hazy, as well as the front bumper. And overall, everything in the front looks proper and how it ought to be. The last thing is the leaning. The truck should be level. It cannot be leaning front, back, or side to side. And they may want you to say reasons it would be leaning, which would be broken suspension, if one of your tires was um, missing a piece or low on pressure, anything like that, um, or if one of the airbags or anything like that is broken. Um, they may want you to say that. Airbag relief spring. So from here, we look good in the front, so now we're going to pop the hood and look under it. But that is everything for the front of the vehicle. If you have this paper on the test, it tells you to go in a certain um, order. And this is the order that the tester will actually have. So for their sake, you may want to follow this. I personally like to do ground up. Um, so that is actually what I'm going to do. But if you would like to follow the order they have it in, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I just think it's easier to go ground up because then you remember each component as you're going up rather than trying to remember uh, what's the order that I'm supposed to do it in. So first thing on the ground, we have the tires, rims, a few things with tires. The drive, or sorry, the steering tires, these are, have to be at least a minimum of 430 seconds deep on the tread depth. You, you will say, but you do not have to actually check. If I wanted to check, I would use a tread depth gauge. They are evenly worn all the way across. You don't see any cuts, abrasions, bumps, anything like that. So coming down to the side, there's also no cuts or bumps or anything like that on this. The tire looks good. Here at the valve stem, the valve stem is properly centered. It's not broken or bent. And if I wanted to check the tire pressure, um, tire pressure to manufacturer specifications, I could use a tire pressure gauge, an air pressure gauge, and check there. Coming to the rim, there are no illegal welds. There's no breaks in it. There's no holes in it, no rust. It is properly mounted and secured. I see nothing wrong with it. 
all these nuts. I don't see any cracks or any breaks in them. I don't see any rust uh, trails going from any of them, which could indicate they're loose. It appears that each stud has the same amount of threads showing, which would also say they are tight, and there is no stud stretching happening. Coming down here to the hub assembly, I don't see any hub oil sprayed out around if there was a leak. So that we are good on, and everything here is properly mounted secured. I don't see anything wrong with this. Then coming to the inside, which will be hard to film, we have our brakes. So anytime we're using a hose or a, a wire, it's cut, frayed, um, or loose. So my hose here is not cut, frayed, or loose, and it's properly mounted and secured. I don't see anything wrong with it. The brake chamber as well, no brakes. It's probably mounted and secured, nothing wrong with it. You don't have to test the slack adjuster because you have to have the brakes off to test it. But what you will say to the instructor is, if I wanted to test it, I would chalk my wheels. I would pull this slack adjuster. Um, it can have no more than an inch of give and it must go back in on its own afterward. Now, coming down to everything down here, we have in the back, we have a tie rod. Our tie rod is that long rod there that goes all the way across. One thing you need to know is that is mounted using cotter pins and castle nuts. Cotter pins and castle nuts. And that's almost everything in the driving uh, or the steering system. So, coming here to this uh, curved piece here. This is your steering knuckle that is properly mounted secured with cotter pins and castle nuts, and there's nothing broken. That goes to this drag link, which is properly mounted secured using castle nuts to the pitman arm, which is properly mounted secured to the steering box, which is properly mounted and secured to the frame. And I see no liquids or anything that is not supposed to be there with the steering box. I also see no cut, no cuts or anything on the wires or the tubes going to the steering box. Then we come here to our U-joint, which is properly mounted and secured and properly greased. Coming up here to the steering shaft, it is properly mounted and secured and it can have no more than 10 degrees of play in it. No more than 10 degrees of play. Now coming back down here, this is our leaf spring. Our leaf spring hanger is properly mm -hmm. mounted and secured to the frame. There is no stud stretching. There's no rust marks or rust trails. So they appear to be tight. Our leaf springs are parallel. They have no scissoring in them. The things that secure them to the drive axle are the U um, bolts. There's no brakes or anything in the U-bolts. They're properly mounted secured. And if you look down there, it will be hard to see, but there are nuts on them. I see no stud stretching. I see no rust trails. It's always the same thing with nuts and studs. Our back hanger, it's properly mounted secured to the frame and to the uh, leaf springs. And then here we have our shock absorbers, our shock mount is properly mounted and secured, no stud stretching, to the frame. And I do not see any fluids or liquids on the shock itself. One other thing while we're down here, I don't see any fluids or liquids on the ground below the truck either. Now, certain things as we come up here are not on the test. So make sure that you look at that paper we're gonna have all over here um, on screen like this. Uh, fuel filter you do not say anything about on the test there's a few components you would think like the exhaust would be on the test you do not say anything about the exhaust it is not required so coming up to here we have our coolant reservoir which is properly mounted and secured I can see through the sight glass that it has enough coolant to manufacture a specification if it were cool, I could take the cap off and check, but the engine is not cool. So, but looking in the sight glass is more than enough. Then when you come down here to your oil. Your oil, you most likely will not have to actually pull, but you may want to. Um, that's up to your instructor, but you will just tell them, I would pull the oil out. 
I would wipe off the stick, put it back in to where it will be while driving, pull it back out and make sure add or full and add I apologize full and add if it's below add you must add if it's above full you must take some out it must be between full and add you also will say that this is where I would put the oil in if it needed some oil and that is properly mounted and secured as well now coming to your belts your belts must have between three quarters of an inch and one inch of give no more no less there is no cuts, there are no frays, they are not loose, they are properly mounted and secured. The radiator is also properly mounted and secured. Looking at the fan, I don't see any broken fins on this side. I don't see anything wrong with the radiator. Um, you will come, one item that's on your list is the alternator here. We have our alternators properly mounted and secured. And one thing you will need to know is whether your alternator is belt driven or gear driven. We of course have ours is belt driven as it's connected directly to that belt and it's properly mounted secured and all of the wires going to it are not cut frayed or loose. They all are how they ought to be and there's nothing wrong with them. The frame is properly mounted secured. There are a few things with the frame that are special. No illegal welds on the frame and there are no illegally drilled holes in the frame. And it's probably not secured, no cuts, breaks, or anything like that. You will check the frame a total of three times. Once here, once halfway back, and once at the back of the truck. Now, that is it for this side of our particular truck. Every truck is different, but if you hit these items, you will be good. And then at the end of one side, it's good to say everything here, as far as I can see, has no issues and it's how it's supposed to be. I don't see anything broken. So now we can move over to the other side and hit our things over there. So coming over to this side, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, you don't need to do the wheels or the frame or anything over here that you did on the other side, but things specific to this side. We have our fluids. So here we have we are our windshield wiper fluid. It is above the minimum manufacturer's uh, specified uh, minimum level. Our other fluid here is our uh, power steering fluid. Both reservoirs are properly mounted and secured. If I want to check the level, I can unscrew this and pull it up and check. Um, you most likely should say that, but they probably won't make you do it. While we're talking about power steering fluid coming in here, it's extremely hard to see. We have down here our power steering um, pump. And this is a gear driven power steering pump. You will need to know if it's belt driven or gear driven for a few of these components anytime I mention that. Now back here, we have our air compressor. All the hoses and everything going to it is properly mounted and secured as well as itself is properly mounted and secured. That is a gear driven air compressor. You will need to know if yours is gear driven or belt driven. Our radiator fan on this side looks great as well as the other belts on this side again between a three quarter of an inch and an inch of give. Nothing cut, frayed or loose. Coming up here, we have our turbo. It's hot, so I won't touch it. But our turbo is properly mounted and secured. I don't see any wires or hoses going to it that are cut, frayed or loose. Everything looks great with that. And once again, at the end, you want to say, overall, everything I see here appears to be in working proper order. So now we're going to close the hood. Your hood probably has a hood latch. Make sure you know where that is. That's ours. You lift it up and now it will drop. And then we're going to go down the back of the, the right side of the truck once we have the hood down. So coming down the side of the truck, <clears throat> excuse me, our traffic monitoring device is properly mounted and secured. I don't see anything on it. Um, the in cab you'll talk about, traffic monitoring device, but there's no brakes in it. It's clear um, and working and properly adjusted. Our handle here is properly mounted and secured. Um, very important coming down here. Our battery, you don't need to open it, but our battery container is properly mounted and secured. Here we have, this is not in there like it should be. 
Probably man secured. I don't see any acids, liquids, anything like that on it that should not be. So everything there is looking good. Our steps are properly mounted secured. They're not broken, they're not uneven, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, again, we have another light here. Anytime you see a light, you wanna to touch it and talk about it. This light is properly mounted secured of the proper color. It's clear and not hazy and it is working. Coming to our uh, fuel tank here, you wanna mention the straps. Our straps are not broken. They're properly mounted secured. There's no cracks in them or anything like that. They have the rubber beneath them separating them from the metal. It cannot touch metal to metal due to corrosion. So we have these straps are all good. You want to open this up. Say that my lids. Um, my lids O-ring is in good condition there's no cuts or anything like that so it will properly my lids o-ring is not cracked or anything like that so it will properly uh, seal and the lid goes or the uh, fuel tank cap goes on properly also this coming to the back i see nothing around it or on it no fuel no liquids nothing like that that would indicate a leak now coming here our catwalk is properly mounted and secured i see no brakes in it I'm gonna do our second frame check. You're saying the exact same thing. The frame is properly mounted and secured. There's no breaks, cuts, no illegal welds, no illegal drilled holes in it, illegally drilled holes in it. Now, coming up to here, both our air hoses that go to the trailer. There's no cuts, nothing frayed, nothing loose with that. It's properly mounted and secured, as well as our electric is properly mounted and secured. Nothing wrong with them. And everything there looks good. You'll look under the tri under the truck. You don't need to cite anything specific, but you'll just say, generally looking under the truck, everything looks good. I see nothing broken, nothing out of place. The airbag's good. Everything there is good. I don't see any tilting, anything broken. Um, the drive shaft, everything looks good. You don't need to specifically mention anything, but if you want to, you may. Now. Coming to this, these drive tires, you have the same thing down here. No stud stretching, no broken nuts, the exact same thing is up there. Um, no rust trails, anything like that. Both our studs um, for our air pressure gauge are centered, that's a big thing, so we can actually get to them. You might not be able to see it. It is centered and it is straight in there. Um, so yeah, you need to say that it's centered so that you can actually get to it. Um, no illegal welds or anything like that here. Um, as well as the tire. There's nothing wrong with the tire. There's no gashes. It needs to be on drive tires at least two thirty seconds of an inch um, thick on the tread. I could use a tread depth gauge to check that. There is of a proper amount of spacing between the tires and there are no contaminants or anything in between the tires. It's that they will not touch and they are the same type of tire they cannot be different types of tires they can look in the camera won't be able to see but just like the front you'll be looking in and i'll show you on the front you'll see on the front how to talk about the brakes um, for the tires it's the exact same thing here the same types of brakes um, it'll be a drum brake anyway you can go back to the beginning um, with those front tires and it's the same type of brakes So here we're going to do our third frame check Where again properly mounted secured no cracks breaks nothing loose or hanging um, There are no illegal welds and no illegal drill holes now looking up at our fifth wheel There's a few things our fifth wheels properly mounted and secured as everything else our fifth wheel pin is in there is no gap between the fifth wheel and the trailer apron. Um, you also need to come under here and look and make sure that our fifth wheel jaws are around the kingpin. You need to say that the kingpin is not cracked or bent. The camera won't be able to see this, but the kingpin cannot be cracked or bent and the jaws need to be around it, that uh, little bar there. So everything back here, and then we're gonna hit our lights. 
um, our brake lights are properly mounted secured of the proper color they're clear and working so that should be everything with the truck now we'll move on to the trailer inspection so looking at the brakes themselves the brake drums are of a safe dry, uh, thickness there are no contaminants in the brake drums and there's no parts missing or broken on the brake drums so that is all you need to say for your brakes so on the trailer one thing you want to keep in mind every light you pass you want to touch and say the same thing properly mounted secured clear not hazy working and of the proper color now with the trailer here we have reflective tape on 50 percent or more of the truck we have our reflective tape Marker light here or clearance light here is proper mount secured, working, and of the um, proper color. Now, I'm not going to mention any other lights. I'll point to them, but you say the same exact thing for every one. So, I've said it already like 10 times. So, you say that for every single light you pass. Now, looking at the landing gear, I know nothing about the landing gear because ours didn't have landing gear. So, we'll come back and do that. <laughs> so, coming back. Here we have another light, same thing that you're going to say for all of them. Now as we're walking back, I don't see anything broken on the frame, I don't see any cracks, anything wrong with it. Um, everything looks properly mounted and secured. Coming to these wheels, once again, same exact thing as the drive tires essentially. It must be the same tire, must be 430 seconds, tread depth, yeah you're right. Now coming here, it has to be the same thing as the drive tires on the truck. Those are the rear tires. So two 30 seconds inch tread depth. They must be the same tires. They must have a proper um, gap between them. No contaminants, nothing like that in between them. You're going to look at every uh, stud for the air pressure, every stud here, make sure all the nuts are tight, make sure there's no oil spraying around for the hub assembly. So once you know how to check one tire, you know how to check every tire. So we're not going to go over that. So come to the back. Again, for all these lights, you're saying the same thing. Properly mounted, secure, working, proper color, clear, not hazy. Back here, you want to hit your license plate on the front and the back. So our license plate here is properly mounted, secured. Nothing wrong with it. It's not broken. Our bumper is properly mounted, secured. No cracks, nothing like that. No illegal welds. And I believe that's it. I don't believe you have to say anything about mud flaps or anything like that. This obviously is a tanker, so it'll be different from your dry van or whatever you're taking your test in. But that should be it for the trailer. So here with the trailer, everything with the lights and the tires are going to be the same. So every light you pass, you're going to say, this light is properly mounted and secured of the correct color. There's no haziness. It is clear and it is working. Same with the tires. You're going to say everything you said for the drive tires for every tire. Tread depth, no gashes, everything like that. So, things specific to the trailer. Reflective tape. The trailer must have 50% or more of it having reflective tape on it. 50% or greater. So, that's all you need to say about the reflective tape. Then come to your landing gear. It is properly mounted and secured. There's nothing twisted, nothing broken. I don't see any cracks. I don't see any missing bolts or anything like that. And it has proper clearance from the ground. So, coming back here, we have another light. You're going to say the exact same thing about that light and touch it. Keep coming. For these tires, you're going to say the exact same thing as the drive tire. You're going to talk about the valve stem. There's no hub assembly oil coming around here, the tread depth, nothing wrong with tires. Same exact thing as the drive tires. Now back here, the same exact thing as the lights, as I said earlier. And back here, the only thing you're going to talk about is the license plate. License plate is properly mounted secured, it's not broken, and you can clearly see it. Nothing wrong with the license plate. So the trailer is pretty easy, that's all you need to say for the trailer, and that should be it for the pre-trip inspection.